All right, welcome to Ancient Greece. We're going to look at Alexander the Great Empire. Need to know book. You pick me for the questions. Macedonia. All right, Alexander the Great. Um, he is going to create one of the world's largest uh, land empires, um, at least of this time period. He's going to conquer the largest known empire of the time, and really the first major uh, complex empire in the Persians. And then he's going to build it out from the Indus Valley all the way through the Nile, Europe. Now he's going to use something called the phalanx. All right. The phalanx is going to be an important battle formation that the Persians just were not able to deal with. All right. In fact, this was uh, the super fighting machine of its time. And the only thing that could stop a phalanx was a phalanx. Now, we have to go back to a little bit in time to the old Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta. Now, what happens is Athens starts the Dalian League after the Persian War, and Athens becomes rich. Sparta gets mad. Next thing you know, Sparta and Athens go to war after 30 years of fighting. That is 30, three, zero. 30 years of fighting. Both nations, uh, both city states are weakened. Sparta is able to pull out the win, but King Philip has been building his army, sharpening his tools, and now, sensing the moment of weakness, he's going to swoop down from Macedonia. That is, m -m 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 Macedonia. He's going to swoop down from Macedonia into um, Greece, and he's going to take over. And step by step, he's going to build his empire. Now, if you look at this map here, you can kind of see, here's where Sparta, I mean, here's where Athens is, and here's old Sparta down here. Now, way up here is Macedonia. Now, they consider themselves Greek as well, but they're going to from here and slowly began to take over this area all right uh, now meanwhile this is a, all going on during the time that the persians i mean that the uh um that the greek city states were fighting each other so he's building his power base and finally he just comes in and he swoops over and he unites greece into really the first greek empire king philip now his plan was to go hit Persia, all right? Persia was the big, um, the big boss on the corner. If you knock off the big boss, then you're the big boss. So Philip really wanted to invade Persia. And, I mean, if you look here, um, here's King Philip's empire over here. Here is the Persian empire here, stretching all the way from Anatolia to um, actually part of the Indus Valley. Uh, the Persians had gone into this area already. So this is the biggest land-based empire of its time. Now before he get ready to do it, King Philip, of course, is going to be assassinated. Um, and once he's assassinated, son is going to step in and rule for him. Of course, I'm talking about Alexander the Great. He's not quite Alexander the Great yet. He's only 19 years old, but it would be shortly thereafter that he would earn the name Alexander the Great. Although an inferior race, the Persians control at least four-fifths of the known world. They rule, and we sit around like frogs. Master? Yes? 
Master. Yeah, we're out with it, out with it. Why are the Persians so cruel? Oh, come on. <laughs> that is not the subject for today, Neocus, but uh, it is true. The Oriental races uh, are known for their barbarity and their slavish devotion to their senses. Excess in all things is the undoing of men. That is why we Greeks are superior. We practice control of our senses. Moderation. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> now, back to geography and things that we know. Is it possible that the source of Egypt's mighty river Nile could rise in these distant mountains of the outer earth? If so, an experienced navigator could find his way here by this river east down into the great plains of India, out into the eastern ocean, and enter the world, and by this route, up the Nile, back to Egypt, into the Middle Sea, and home to Greece. Now, if only these frogs could look outward and act on their favored position at the center, Greece could rule the world. Alexander is going to, of course, take Aristotle's teachings to heart, and he's going to carry them out in all of the known world at that time. And I think the known world, we're talking about everyone, everything that Aristotle knew, all right, which, of course, included Egypt, Old Mesopotamia, and the Indus uh, Valley. Um, now, what he didn't know much about was China, all right, but if you look here, I mean, he's conquered three of the four ancient river valley civilizations all right and he's going to do it not by uh, kindness he's going to do it by bloodshed his first example was the city of Thebes they tried to fight Alexander when he first took the throne and he had every man woman and child murdered after that, Greece fell, and he set his side, set his sights on Persia. Before he hit Persia, he had to take a soft target. The Persians controlled Egypt, so he marched right into Egypt and took over. Um, the Egyptians welcomed Alexander. Um, in fact, they're going to crown him pharaoh, and every pharaoh thereafter is actually going to be of Greek origin, um, which is one of the reasons why people mix up Cleopatra thinking she's black, but Cleopatra is actually Greek. Um, now, when he goes to um, Egypt, he's going to build a city there called Alexandria. Alexandria is going to be extremely important. And he's going to found a lot of cities called Alexandria. One in Egypt is going to be extremely important because this is going to be the center of his Hellenistic empire. Alexandria. Now, after Greece, he goes to Greece. <laughs> Persian Empire is going to 
begin to crumble and then fall. Um, Alexander is going to continue to fight, uh, which is here. He's going to march onward all the way to India and continue his fight where he will finally be wounded in India. Um, now his goal was to blend all of these great cultures, the Egyptians, the Persians, Indian culture into one huge culture called Hellenism. All right, and he's going to have some degree of success, all right, as um, items are going to be exchanged from different parts of the world, all right, and what you're going to have is this great um, flowing of not only items and products, but ideas, ideas, and this is the fuel of Hellenism. Now, this was Alexander's dream. Most Greeks did not agree with him. In fact, they're going to resist him. Many thought he was actually crazy. But 11 years, 11,000 miles, he is going to fight on. All right. In India, he will be wounded. All right. And that wound is going to fester, and shortly thereafter, he will die from that at the tender age of 33, okay, so at 33, he had conquered most of the world, at least that was known to him. Now, I got a few questions for you here. Um, go ahead and answer these questions, and please write out the letter and the words of each answer. Now, what is his legacy? He conquered nearly most of the known world. He's going to spread Greek culture far and wide. Um, now he's going to try to unite it in something called, say it again, say it with me, Hellenism. All right. Um, now, one thing I want y'all to know about Hellenism. Hellenism does not include the Roman culture. He did not conquer Rome. Rome was not even a thought at this time. Rome was a backwater little town. Nobody thought two cents about Rome at this time. He tried to combine Greece, India, Persia, and Egypt. Those four cultures together. All right, got another question here. Question number four. Please answer this in a complete sentence. And that concludes Alexander. Persians and Asians.